Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we praise your name, we praise your power, we praise your mercies. We thank you for today. We thank you for our fellowship with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, and the brethren. Righteous Father, we look up unto heaven, we pray. Speak to the heart of each and every one of us. I pray that to transform our lives. Amen. Father, deliver us from every evil works. I pray that you perfect that which concerns every one of us and qualify us for the rapture of the saint in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray that as many who shall listen to this message, I pray that their life shall never be the same. Grant them salvation, sanctification, restoration. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask the Holy Ghost to take over and bless everyone. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. And it is amen in heaven. Shall we get seated? Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this word as not abusing it for the fashion of this world, but set away. In verse 35, and this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distractions. In Luke chapter 14, and verse 23, and the Lord said unto the servants, go out into the highways and hedges and compare them to come in that my house may be filled. And in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be healed. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so from these chapters and verses, I'm bringing to you the team. What does this time require us? We are looking at part one. At every point in time, we should know what to do. And we should know what does the time require. And that's why this message becomes very necessary. We are in the very last days. The trumpet is about to sound. And the end of the world is at hand. If you look at your Bible in Matthew chapter 24, I read from verse 1, 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? But he like his son to you, that shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the mount of olives, the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? 
And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? If you look at that place, you will see that the disciples wanted to know what is the sign of your coming, which means sign of your second coming. And also want to know what are the signs of the ends. So we need to know at this primary time, we need to know the signs of his coming. We need to know the time of the end. And that's why this message becomes very necessary. We need to know what to do in this time. Second Timothy, I read chapter 3 and from verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, territors, hate the high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such torn away. And so, if you look at the place you read, you see the features that characterize the last days when the Lord shall come and on the end of the world. So, every true child of God and every human being that fears God who is wishing to be a child of God and make heaven at the end of his or her life must be conscious of what he or she should be doing at this time before the trumpet sounds before we are taken out of this world. We should know what we should be doing and so what does this time require? If you look at this place in the Bible, but we made to know that trumpet shall sound and it shall be for a matter of moment. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised up incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So it is very, very clear that very shortly the trumpet shall sound. And believers who are still alive, we put on celestial body, which shall be changed. And we shall meet with the Lord in the air to be with him forever and ever. Take notes. So this is the soon coming event and is at hand. With all the signs that are around us, it is very clear the Lord is coming. But the point is, what does this time require? What do we do in a time like this? So, we shall consider this message under the flowing subheadings. One, the preparation and so winning. Two, the reasons and danger of neglect. Let's go to point number one. The preparation and so winning. No believer should allow himself or herself to be polluted or defied. We should maintain purity within and without. We should ensure proper preparation and nothing is standing between us and God. This should be our primary duty ensuring 
There is no unrighteousness. Ensuring that nothing is standing between us and God. Ensuring that we maintain peace with God and peace with man. If you look at the book of uh, Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4. I read verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. There's need for preparation because we are waiting for our Savior, for our Redeemer, for our Messiah, for the King of Kings, for the Lord of Lords. We are waiting for the everlasting Father who is coming to rapture the saints, even Jesus Christ, who is coming to take us home to be with him forever and ever. And you know, that's not like him. He's holy, he's pure, and meeting him requires purity, holiness. So we ought to prepare everyone a wishing to make heaven at last. I want to be among those as a rapture, we must prepare. Remember that very shortly, the trumpet shall sound. As we have seen in the book of First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 52, and even to 53. So we must endeavor to be ready, not allowing any spot or wrinkle as a matter of preparation, we are ready, not allowing anything to stand before us and God. If you look at the book of Matthew 24, verse 44, therefore, be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So, we must be ready. Here we have been told, in such hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. We must be ready at all time. We must not allow anything to distract us, to stand before us and God. We must be ready at all times. If you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's the church that Christ is coming to rapture. A holy church. Church without spot or wrinkle. Church without any iota of unrighteousness or stain. A church without blemish. Holy church. That's what Christ is coming for. He's coming to rapture. And so, Every one of us to aim at this, we must ensure that there is nothing standing between us and God. There is nothing standing between us and men. We keep to purity, to righteousness, to fear of God. We keep to peace with God and peace with men. We must maintain righteousness on every side. This should be our preparation. And so, everyone who is hearing me today, believers, and even as many who fears God, who want to be saved, you should look quickly and then join in this primary duty, preparing and ensuring that nothing is standing between you and God. We should engage a more practical approach in every area of our Christian life. We should do away with Christianity of theory, precepts. We should engage ourselves in more practical Christian life. What we preach, what we teach, what we hear, we go on to live out the lifestyle. Let people see it not. Let God from heaven see it, see our sincerity, our faithfulness, our obedience, our love for God, our love for our brethren, our love for our neighbor. Let him see the transparent Christian life in us. 
and glorify God. We should be more practical. We should obey God. We should love one another. We should maintain peace with one another. We should ensure purity within and without. Let us not be those that preach the word, those that hear the word, but are not practicalizing what we are hearing. That is contrary to the will of God. As we preach, as we teach, as we hear, we must be practical. Put it into practice. Let people see it in us. Let God also be a witness that we are believers indeed and not hypocrites. We should maintain the character that we speak for us. Character that speaks holiness, righteousness, purity, humility, fear of God, love for God and for our neighbor, for one another. Let's maintain peace. Character that we speak for peace between us and God. And between us and men, if you look at the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Matthew chapter 5, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let people, let others, let whoever is observing you see your practical Christian life and then give God the glory and be drawn and be attracted by that beauty of your Christian life, beauty of holiness, of righteousness. Let them see it and be attracted and begin to love God and be drawn to the Lord to give their life to him. So let them see it and praise God that this is what God can do. And no man can transform and make a man to be like you. So let them see it and say, God, you are the one that did this wonderful work in perfecting purifying and beautifying this person with holiness and purity. So we should compare others as a matter of what we should be doing before the coming of Jesus Christ. We should compare others to come to the Lord. We should compare them to repent and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord, as their personal Savior. We must not give room for them to give you excuses. There is no amount of excuse that will be accepted for them to die and go to hell fire. And on our own side, there is no amount of uh, labor or commitment or invitation we are giving to them that will be tired until we ensure that these ones have responded to the Lord's invitation. And we are sure that they are saved, they are converted, until we bring them to the Lord. So we must do everything as long as this time is concerned, time of grace, time of mercy, to bring them to the Lord. If you look at the Bible, in Luke chapter 14, verse 23, and the Lord said unto the servants, go out into the highways and hedges and compare them to come in that my house may be feared. Let's compare them. Let us make sure we do not take any excuse from them. Let us persuade them. Let us consistently ensure we invite them and we touch their life and ensure they come in. They respond to the invitation of the Lord through our prayers and fasting and invitation and consistent follow-up and reaching out. As we do, they shall be served. And this will be our primary duty. What this time requires is to make sure we take advantage of the grace and invite everybody to come, compare them to come before the trumpet sounds. Also, we should preach in season and out of season. This time around. There's no point of saying, I will do it in the evening, I will do it in the morning, I will do it tomorrow, I will do it next week, I will do it when convenient. I want to let you know, there's no more time. Christ is coming. The end, the coming of Jesus is at hand. The end of the world is at hand. And so, we must make sure that we preach always to win them, we we'll preach always for them to be saved. 
we preach always to ensure that not giving the, the opportunity for them to excuse themselves away from God. We preach in season and out of season. We ensure that everyone have had the word of God from us, that none of them shall give excuse and say, I didn't hear. So let's reach out to them and preach always. In the book of Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 4, look at your Bible and read verse 1 and 2. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. So let's preach, teach them rebuke and correct and let's ensure sound doctrine so that these ones will not be lost and will not be misled let's also ensure we preach to them with our lifestyle let's go and preach in season and out of season also we should preach in season and out of season as I've told you I say preach in season and out of season and we should go everywhere preaching the gospel. Everywhere. If you look at the Bible, I told you we must not allow a situation where we want to be selective on when to do it and not to do it. And say, well, at your convenient time, you will do it. No, not at all. If you look at the case of these apostles in Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And so was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout all the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And the devout men carried Stephen to his barrier and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. If you look at that place, you see that it was real in inconvenient time. At this time, the persecution was terrible. At this very time, Stephen, one of the apostles, was killed as a matter of persecution. And they carried him to Beria. And brethren were scattered. And yet, as they were scattered, they went everywhere preaching the word. I want to let you know that what this time requires is not a time to complain or to mourn your condition or a time for you to run away, or a time for you to flee persecution. No, it is a time we should go everywhere preaching the gospel. No matter the, the, what you are going through, no matter the situation on ground, seek to go everywhere to preach. That's what is required of you. If you look at Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, and he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We must go and preach to everywhere all over the world. We must go and preach the gospel to all creature until they are saved. Until they receive the gospel and save Jesus Christ as the Lord, as their personal Savior. So let's go and preach in keeping to the commandments. This is the primary duty. That takes us to point number two. The reasons and danger of neglect. Everyone should understand that there is no more time and we do not know the hour when the Lord shall come. Remember, if you look at the book of Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, we should know the time, that now it is High time to wake out of sleep. For now 
is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is fast spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put it on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The point is, the time is at hand, and we should know the time. The night is fast spent, the day is at hand. The coming of Jesus is at hand. And everyone should know it. And then give ourselves totally to the Lord. And do not allow the flesh or the things of this world to be cloud our vision. Let us see Jesus only. Let us ensure Jesus only. And as we go on to do that, I'm assuring you, we shall make it when the trumpet shall sound in Jesus' name. Remember, there is no more time. Christ is coming. In the book of Matthew 24, I read from verse 36. But of that day and hour, know it no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There shall too be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Now look at verse 41. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief cometh, or the thief would come, he would have washed and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So, take note, be ready at all times. When you at least expect him, the Lord shall come. And if you are not prepared, remember, one shall be taken and the other left. The one that is prepared and ready shall be taken. And a careless soul who has no time for preparation will be left. I pray that it shall never be your portion. Amen. So be ready at all times. If any person is careless and about his or her Christian life, such person is treading on dangerous ground, as there may be no more time to prepare when the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sounds, if you are not prepared, you have missed it and you have missed it forever. In Matthew chapter 25, from verse 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I son to you, I know your not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So be watchful, ensure that you keep the purity, ensure that you keep the holiness, that nothing is standing between you and God, so that that day it will not take one away. You'll be ready so that when the trumpet shall sound, you will make it. You'll not be like the foolish virgin who were unprepared. And those who are prepared entered in, and the door was shut. And every other pleading for that was not granted. 
I pray that God will deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us do the work now. Let us serve him as many of us that are saved, as many of us that are born again, as many of us that are children of God. Let's go and serve him now. The talent you have received, the grace you have received, the gift you have received, is to serve God now. When we drop our body, we don't need that talent anymore. This is the time you need to make use of your gift as evangelists, as believers, as soul winners, to bring others into the kingdom of God. When we drop our body, that work shall not be accepted. Let's do it now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. And I read, For he said, I've had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I scored thee. Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So, the Lord can only hear you in the day of grace. In the day that Christ has not come, Day that has not occurred, the time that was, you still have grace to be saved. This is the time your work is accepted. Your soul winning as an evangelist is accepted. As a believer is accepted. Now, it's not after death. After death, we go to rest and not to labor. So let's do it now. Now is acceptable time. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Remember, after as we have dropped our body, what follows is if you are not saved, what follows is the path from me. Ye that walk in iniquity, I know you not. If you are saved, and you did not use your talent as God will have you to do. At the end of it all, I want to let you know that that talent will be useless. You cannot use it again. So, use it now to win others. And then, if you are saved and you gain, and you were able to use that talent profitable, you'll be rewarded at the time of judgment I'm assuring you, the Lord will reward you. Will crown in Jesus' name. Everyone is required to prepare and ensure we keep to these instructions. Let people see our Lord Jesus Christ in you. It is in your, in your actions. It is in your comportment, your dispositions. Let them see it in your character. Let them see Christ in you, in thought, in ways, in action. Let them see Christ in you, in love, in fear of God, in humility, in faithfulness. Let them see Christ in you, in holiness. If you look at your Bible, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before me, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, let's go and shine in righteousness in practical Christian life so that others will be convicted and follow the Lord and be saved. So that others will see Christ in you and then be attracted to give their life to Christ and be saved. Also, let us go into the world to preach the gospel to all nations and everywhere. That's what is required of all. Remember 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Preach in season and out of season. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's go and preach. Let us not give excuse. In the book of Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, I read verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compare them to come in that my house may be filled. Why son to 
you that none of these men which were bidding shall test of my supper. And there went great multitude with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower? Sit not down first and count the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it. Least happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So the point is, as the Lord has called us into this ministry, and we have been converted, we are now children of God, let us understand that there is something it requires from us. It requires all that have been outlined above. If anyone that start this race and not able to meet requirements, that person will be like somebody who started a house and was not able to finish it. And then men will mock that person. And that is not what is expected of you. Let us go and give this time what it requires by living out the Christian life and winning others. Let us ensure we go out to fulfill the will of God so that when the trumpet shall sound, we shall finish strong and finish well and make heaven at last in Jesus' name. So, let us be those who started and finished. Those who started the rest and made it at the end in Jesus' name. So, as I begin to round up, I want you to take note as we do all these things, many souls shall be converted before that day of rapture. And as many who that wish to make heaven and they are not yet saved, you should do something because there is no more time. Because this time require, requires that you give your life to Jesus. You are truly born again. And you are living your life according to the will of God. That's what this time requires for you who is not yet born again. And once you are converted, you go on to maintain righteousness. Serve God with all your heart. And heaven at last shall be your portion in Jesus' name. So finally, for those people who are not yet born again, they should repent, confess their sins, and promise God no more. They should believe that Jesus Christ died for us. He shed his precious blood for us. And he was buried on the third day. He rose again for our justification. You should believe it. And listen to your heart as a Lord, as a personal Savior. Remember, the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and I want to let you know as long as you are born of a man and a woman into this world except you are born again you are not yet a Christian and so you must do something before it is too late. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to let you know, every one of us who wants to make heaven is bound to receive this gift free gift the righteousness of God being Jesus Christ once we see the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ haven't lost it through Adam as you receive you receive the foundation of righteousness by which you go on to live righteous life without accepting this gift you cannot live righteous if you live righteous life it will be unacceptable in the sight of God righteousness without Christ 
It is a house without foundation. No wonder the Bible said in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, make haste and give your life to Jesus Christ and be born again. And they go on to live the life that pleases God by the grace of God. And so if you are there right now and you are not yet saved, I want to let you know, a Christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a Christian. And if you look at the Bible, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 8, Whosoever is born of God, do not commit sin, for he still remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. When you are born of God, born again, you will not continue to live in sin because you are still the seed, the spirit of righteousness, the Son of God that does not have any iota of sin. So, if you look at the book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 18, it says, We know. And whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. If you are truly born again, you receive grace to keep yourself from sin, from unrighteousness. And the devil cannot gain access to you when the door of sin is shut. When you have closed your door to sin, Satan cannot torment you because it's only sin that open way that are making to gain access to torment uh, children of God. So take note. You are asking what is sin. Look at verse 17, what we just read. All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is sin. Look at the first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know you not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Those that live this kind of life, they cannot enter heaven. If you are among those that have unbelief, that is sin, unforgiveness, and selfishness. You need to repent to them and promise God no more. Or maybe you are into lying, pride, hatred, envy, contention, and keeping malice, bearing grudge, lusting after evil thing, covetousness, love of the money, love of the world. Confess them and promise God no more. So you are among those that are wallowing in, in insincerity, unfaithfulness, or blasphemy. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Or it could be that they're involved in backbiting, speaking evil of other people. Or murmuring, cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, watching an idea or making an idea in your heart, or having an idea in your life. Confess them and renounce them and promise God no more. Or maybe you patronize the native doctors or you're one of them. Or you go for divination, you make sham. You go for pan reading, or you are consulting the dead. Repent to them, promise God no more. Ask for the mystery of God. Or you belong to a secret court, or open court, marine court, or witchcraft court, local or international court. Renounce them and gather their property and burn them, and promise God no more. Those people that are stealing from where they are working or stealing from people or stealing from government, maybe you are a robber, you a dupe. That is evil. Repent and promise God no more. And if you are among this group, whenever you had us giving uh, offering in this church or money, please, we don't need your money. Return it back to the owner. Do restitution and mend your ways. Don't rise us shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know the evil you are into, all the people involved into masturbation, fornication, adultery, 
and into homosexual, lesbianism, those involved into gay, repent and renounce that wickedness and promise God no more. Or maybe you are into prostitution, repent and stop the evil. Or maybe you are into abortion or you hate abortion, don't do it anymore. Repent and promise God. You will never try it anymore. And if you are involved with all these things, don't give us your money. Amend your ways. Or maybe you are involved into, you know, hired assassin, ritual killing. Or you are among those people are involved into terrorism, into kidnapping and killing. These are gross wickedness against God, against humanity. Repent and promise God no more. I mean, there are ways. Or maybe you are involved into fighting and quarreling. You are before be beating your wife and disobedient and stubbornness, disobedient to your husband. Repent and amend their ways. I don't know the evil you are into. Maybe you are among those that are working for people, you don't do the work and collect salary, or you don't pay those working for you. Repent and promise God no more. Amen their ways. The Lord will show you mercy. Maybe you are into extortion or taking bribe or giving bribe. Repent and promise God no more. And you are involved into, you know, those people are involved into smuggling or involved into, uh, you know, smoking. Smoking snuff or taking uh, Indian hemp cocaine or smoking cigarettes or, you know, t taking hard drugs. These are terrible sins. Or maybe you are selling it or buying it for people. Don't do it anymore. I mean, your ways. Ask for the mercy of God. Or maybe you take alcoholic drinks. Uh, local one or foreign one, one percent or half percent, don't do it anymore. I mean, their way, don't sell it, don't buy it for people. I mean, their ways, don't righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Such your life now is acceptable time. Tomorrow, maybe too late. You see, all these people bleaching their body, becoming yellow overnight. That is sin. And all those people that make up their body, extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment and weave on and palming. That is sin. You don't need to make up your body. God has fearfully and wonderfully made you a marvelous to the works of God. And in fact, the Bible tells me in the book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30, when they ask for what shall they do? Do they go after painting, after ornament? When they ask for it, they begin to make up. That's the mark of those that are spoiled. Those are defied. I mean, you are ways. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. If you are among the young men that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, play the hair like a woman, that's evil. If among those that dress to expose your chest, your armpit, your tummy, expose your nakedness to seduce, a seducer is not a Christian, a Christian is not a seducer. I mean, your ways. Or maybe you are among those that marry and divorce. Or you are into polygamous marriage. That is evil. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is for better for worse. Marriage is until the dead do us part. In Matthew chapter 19, and read verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them men and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twin but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. He see that marriage is between a man and a woman. Because God made them at the beginning, he created them male and female. And therefore, if you are into gay marriage, you are wrong. You are walking against the will of God. You must repent and break off. Amen their ways. And obey the word of God and it shall be way for you. And remember, a man will leave father and mother and join to the wife, and they two shall become one flesh. Not three, not two. Which means, if you're a second wife or third wife or fourth wife, you're wrong. You should pack your load and return to your father. If a man that married them two or three or four, you're wrong. You should remove the second and third one and return your first wife. That means, if you have three wives, take away the second and third, return your first wife. And if you are divorced, your first wife, bring her back. And if you are run away from your first husband, 
return back to your husband. As long as the first person that married you and you are married to him as the first person, I mean, you are ways. Do restitution before it is too late. Women that dress like a man is abomination. A man that dress like a woman is abomination. And abominable people can never enter heaven. Look at Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaining to a man. Now shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. They are what? Abomination. And the abominable people can never enter heaven. Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation chapter 21. Look at your Bible. I read verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So people like this. I live this kind of life. The Bible says they cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so if you're involved into these things, confess them, renounce them, promise God no more. Remember, in Proverbs 28, verse 30, the Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. God is willing and ready to show you mercy. And he has made provision for the sins that are past. Because in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, he said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Which means he has made a provision for the sins that are past. And he used the blood of Anima as a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ, which is to come in the New Testament. And it is this blood that watches away our sins. In John chapter 1, I read verse 29. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see, Jesus takes away our sins. If you surrender to him today, he will wash away your sins. Of course, that's why he came into the world. In John chapter 3, verse 16 again, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you look at John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. That's the end of all sacrifices for sin. He said, It is all over. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So, if you want to reconcile with God, come to the Father through Jesus Christ. And your sins shall be washed away. In John chapter 10, verse 10b, he said, I come that they might have life, have it more abundantly. He will give you eternal life. In John chapter 8, verse 36, the Bible said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. In Matthew chapter 11, 28, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So, if you come to the Father through Jesus today, I'm assuring you, eternal life shall be your portion. Freedom from sin shall be your portion. Total freedom. Look at the book of John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to then give him power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. He gave them power of sonship. No wonder the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. He said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. In Christ, Jesus, we have transformation. We have newness of life. We become new creature. We receive grace for righteousness. And no wonder the Bible said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So, any of you wishing and willing to be saved and I compare you, please give your life to Jesus Christ, make your Lord your personal savior and go on to do what you should be doing until the trumpet sound. In Romans chapter 10 verse 13, the Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you call upon God with all your heart, with all sincerity, in repentance and confession of all your past deeds and promise him no more. Today, salvation shall be yours. Rise up and let us pray, everybody. Rise up and pray. Father, have mercy upon us. We are very sorry for our past life. Lord, we repent of every known and unknown deed. We ask for the mercy of God upon us. As many who are still in sin or going to compromise, backsliders, show us mercy. Forgive your people, O God. Turn them from the power of darkness to the power of the living God. Grant them salvation in Jesus' name. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. Keep your hands up if you are truly sorry. I want to pray for you that is always having terrible cases of bitterness and you find it difficult to forgive others. Please forgive and repent of bitterness. The Lord will forgive you. That person also involved in masturbation asks for the mystery of God. The Lord will show you mercy. The person who has been stealing, repent and promise God no more. And that person also that defraud people, repent and promise God no more. And you that are into secret cult, and you that practice witchcraft, repent and promise God no more. That person fighting and quarreling, repent and ask for the mercy of God. And you that commit adultery, repent. And you that patronize the prostitute, don't do that anymore. Are you into prostitution? Repent and ask for the mercy of God. That person committing homosexual. And you involved into lesbianism, repent and promise God no more. And you that is into killing, destroy people's life. Even through abortion, ask for the mercy of God. The Lord will show you mercy. Whatever form of killing you are into, ask for the mercy of God. Or wickedness are into. The Lord will show your mercy. I'm praying for you. Just sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. All to Jesus. Blessed Savior. I surrender. I surrender one more time. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Surrender all, all to Jesus. Blessed Savior, I surrender. Oh, I'm praying for you. Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I present my people before you. Whatsoever they have done against you, against humanity. Known and unknown to them. Father, in your wrath, remember me see. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, I break the yoke in Jesus' name. Amen. And from this moment, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. Cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I pray sanctify believers, restore backsliders. Lord, I pray that visit your people and transform their life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. And it is amen in heaven. Keep 